when evening came, Jesus was reclining at the table with the twelve disciples. As they were eating, he said, Truly I say to you that one of you will betray me. Being deeply grieved, they each one began to say to him, Surely not I, Lord. And he answered, He who dipped his hand with the bowl is the one who will betray me. The Son of Man is to go, just as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had not been born. And Judas, who was betraying him, said, Surely it is not I, Rabbi. Jesus said to him, You have said it yourself. And Jesus came out and proceeded, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives. And the disciples also followed him. When he arrived at the place, he said to them, Pray, that you may not enter into temptation. And he withdrew from them about a stone's throw. And he knelt down and began to pray, saying, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. Now an angel from heaven appeared to him, strengthening him. And being in agony, he was praying very fervently, and his sweat became like drops of blood falling down upon the ground. When he rose from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping from sorrow. And Jesus came and found the disciples sleeping and said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Keep watching and praying that you may not come into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again he went away and prayed, saying the same words, and again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to answer him. And he came the third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up and let us be going. Behold, the one who betrays me is at hand. While he was still speaking, behold, Judas, one of the twelve, came up, accompanied by a large crowd with swords and clubs, who came from the chief priests and elders of the people. Now he who was betraying him gave them a sign, saying, Whomever I kiss, he is the one, seize him. Immediately Judas went to Jesus and said, Hail, Rabbi, and kissed him. And Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you have come for. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and seized him. And behold, one of those who were with Jesus reached and drew out his sword and struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his ear. And Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place. For all those who take up the sword shall perish by the sword. Or do you think that I cannot appeal to my father, and he will at once put at my disposal more than twelve legions of angels? How then will the scriptures be fulfilled, which say that it must happen this way? At that time Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me, as you would against a robber? Every day I used to sit in the temple teaching you, and you did not seize me. But all this has taken place to fulfill the scriptures of the prophets. Then all the disciples left him and fled.
they led Jesus away to the high priest, and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes gathered together. The chief priests and the whole council kept trying to obtain testimony against Jesus to put him to death, and they were not finding any. For many were giving false testimony against him, but their testimony was not consistent. Some stood up and began to give false testimony against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple made with hands, and in three days I will build another made without hands. Not even in this respect was their testimony consistent. The high priest stood up and came forward and questioned Jesus, saying, Do you not answer? What is it? that these men are testifying against you. But he kept silent and did not answer. Again, the high priest was questioning him and saying to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? And Jesus said, I am. And you shall see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Tearing his clothes, the high priest said, What further need do we have of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. How does it seem to you? And they all condemned him to be deserving of death. Some began to spit at him, and to blindfold him, and to beat him with their fists, and to say to him, Prophesy! And the officers received him with slaps in the face. Then the whole body of them got up and brought him before Pilate. And they began to accuse him, saying, We found this man misleading our nation, and forbidding to pay taxes to Caesar, and saying that he himself is Christ, a king. So Pilate asked him, saying, Are you the king of the Jews? And he answered him and said, It is as you say. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, I find no guilt in this man. You brought this man to me as one who incites the people to rebellion. And behold, having examined him before you, I have found no guilt in this man regarding the charges which you make against him. Therefore I will punish him and release him. But they cried out altogether, saying, Away with this man and release for us Barabbas. Pilate, wanting to release Jesus, addressed them again. But they kept calling out, saying, Crucify! Crucify him! And he said to them the third time, Why? What evil has this man done? I have found in him no guilt demanding death. Therefore I will punish him and release him. But they were insistent, with loud voices asking that he be crucified. And their voices began to prevail. And Pilate pronounced sentence that their demand be granted. And he released the man they were asking for, who had been thrown into prison for insurrection and murder. But he delivered Jesus to their will. The soldiers took him away into the palace, and they called together the whole Roman cohort. They dressed him up in purple, and after twisting a crown of thorns, they put it on him, and they began to acclaim him. Hail! king of the Jews. They kept beating his head with a reed and spitting on him and kneeling and bowing before him. After they had mocked him, they took the purple robe off him and put his own garments on him and they led him out to crucify him.